everybody. Another video here for you today. I'm going to start my Shroud of Turin series. And I originally was going to do this in one final video, but really, it is beyond me. After four or five years of research on this, there's no way I can put it into one video. It would take 10 hours. I would lose people. So I'm going to just talk about individual things. And then you can make up your own mind. I'm not trying to change anybody's mind with this series on their beliefs around this time period. I'm just going to give you my views, and then you can take that into full context with other things you have heard and make up your own minds. Longtime subs know I've been piecing this together since 2015 when I stumbled across the Shroud in one of my Knights Templar videos. I thought I'd look into it. The Shroud always seemed a little strange to me. I think I first saw it I'm in search of with Leonard Nimoy. And actually, he does a great job in the show he does on that. He comes to some findings that I that I certainly made. So Leonard Nimoy in the In Search of show actually does one of the better documentaries on the Shroud of Turin. I never want to have preconceived notions when I do a video, but I certainly thought the Shroud would be a medieval hoax, you know, made by somebody to represent the crucifixion story in the New Testament. And after five years of stubbornly coming to this realization that the Shroud isn't based on the New Testament, the New Testament is based on the Shroud. I was like many of you, just dismissive about this. And then I realized that is the biggest mistake and why the true history of this artifact is really not known. Now, I really didn't care anything about biblical history. I was not going to touch it, in fact. I thought it was crazy even to delve into this subject. But after four years of patient research, I think I can tie this together at every level. Leonardo da Vinci has mentioned a lot. In fact, when I interviewed Scott Walter, we talked after the interview was over, and he said, well, I think that was made by da Vinci. And I said, well, I can debunk that in about five seconds. And he just kind of <laughs> dropped it there kind of agreed to disagree, and da Vinci was born decades after this first comes into history in Lyre, France. Da Vinci could not have made it. This is a perfect reverse negative, and they knew nothing about photography in da Vinci's times. When I set out to prove this is a hoax, I came to realize that I was highly mistaken there are no pigments or paint strokes on this, and to this day, nobody can explain how this image was made, even though that I think with extensive research, I think that mystery can be solved. And I'll go into that in a later video. When this priest king of Baalbek was captured and tortured and crucified, and there's a story on why that happened, and really it involves a woman. But when his followers saw this image, on the burial linen. Once again, I think there will be an explanation put forward in the future how this got on there. But what would that have meant to him? Certainly an image that was not created by hand. In some of the earliest texts from Odessa, Turkey mentions that it's not made by hand. What would that have meant to him? It would have been a divine miracle. It would have been a perceived miracle. It would have been perceived as a soul living on in the afterlife. Images were very, very special to these people back then. Just think about it. There was maybe statues, maybe some special artists could paint your picture, but images were special. They embodied the living soul of the person. I will go much further into historical record of this object going all the way back almost 2,000 years. Now, my future videos on the Shroud, I want you to leave comments and questions if you have any. But the dating of this object and why the carbon dating was a total fraud, I will go into in a future video. That is for sure. The church has known about this object for a long, long time. Eusebius puts out a terribly silly story about it 17 centuries ago. And then they try to do a terrible carbon dating where no protocols were kept whatsoever. Now, why would the church 
want to hide the greatest proof of their resurrection story coming from the New Testament? Well, that is a mystery I delved into. First topic I'm going to discuss was a find made down here in the early 1900s. This is the Fayum region of Egypt. A lot of us are familiar with this area. Right down in this area, the Fayum region, Flinders Petrie made a discovery, and it was a pretty cool one. It had to do with mummies and images to take them into the afterlife. For centuries and centuries in Egypt, in tombs, there'd be statues, figurines, and these were very important. They were the living image of the person going into the afterlife. These were vital to tombs. This is a representation of what was in Tut's tomb, but very important. These images carried the soul of the person into the afterlife. You found them everywhere in Egypt, little figurines, big figurines, it didn't matter. Even some of the guardians of the person, figurines were made of so they could perform guard duties in the afterlife. In the Fayum region, in the early 1900s, Flinders Petrie made a pretty cool discovery. He found a bunch of mummies here, and they had what are called mummy portraits. They are called the Fayum mummy portraits. I think there's over 900 of them total. Now, why would they go from statues and figurines to putting the living image of the person right on the mummy wrappings here? This was done on a piece of the wrappings, the linen, put on a board and then put right in to the linen wrappings where the face is actually covering the face. Now, why would they do this starting in the late first century? And this went on for a few centuries. Why would they do this? This is physics.org, a story from a few years ago. First of its kind mummy study reveals clues to a girl's story. Who is she, this little mummy girl? Northwestern University scientists and students are working to unravel some of her mysteries, including how her body was prepared 1,900 years ago in Egypt. 1,900 years ago. What items she may have been buried with, the quality of her bones, and what material is present in her brain cavity. But why was the image put on the burial linen? I will leave that link below. Also this one, Paint the Eyes Softer, Mummy Portraits from Roman Egypt. Here's a look at one close up. Three images, but this is the one that appeared on his mummy right in the middle. He is wearing a wreath around his head, and I'm sure there's a good reason for that. Here is one of these mummy portraits, the whole mummy you can see here. This is a very Egyptian story on here. And the portrait on the linen covering the face to carry the soul into the afterlife. Just think about that, but I'm sure this is a very Egyptian story, or it was originally. Christianity, people in Egypt had no problem with it. I'm sure it's why Josephus calls Shroudman the Egyptian in his war annals. And... It just seems very Egyptian, where this story comes from. There's a reason for that, and it will be gone into in later videos. But it's a reason why when I found his tomb and his church, there were stars on the ceiling, just like Egyptian tombs. Here's another Fayum mummy portrait image painted on the linen, put on a piece of board, and then attached to the mummy wrappings. Shown here with a wreath around the head, like most of them were. Shroudman had a wreath around his head to a plant that was native to Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. Here's another one, and I will leave a few links below. The image to carry the soul into the afterlife. The linen wrapped around his neck here. Here's another one found. And the wreath around its head is symbolic. Now, I'm not making this video saying here, this proves what I'm saying. You just have to take this into context with all these videos I'm going to make. It's not just one thing. It's not just 10 things. It's everything put together that I'm going to show. At the bottom, there's a few more mummy portraits. The portrait on the linen placed over the face on the mummy wrappings with the wreath around its head. That's symbolic. 
and says the religious meaning of mummy portraits has not, so far, been fully explained. Well, I get why they were doing this. It was based on a perceived miracle. Here is one of countless PDFs I have read. It goes over the Gospel of Thomas, a book that is not allowed in the Bible these days for a reason, and I've gone over that. But inscribed on some of these linens is a quote from the Gospel of Thomas. There is nothing buried that will not be raised. Why would they put this on a shroud covering a body in Egypt? It's based on a perceived miracle. Why, starting in the first century, did they put the image of the living person on the burial linen? Well, because a perceived miracle was sweeping across the land. And a few centuries later, that would be turned into Christianity. All these videos I'm going to be making are just going to tie this whole story together. This is just the first one. Hope you thought that was cool. And you all have a very safe day.